Good morning. Good morning. I'm doing this last minute. So it's going to be interesting. See if anybody joins. We did one on Saturday. And it was a good time. Lots of people joined. However, I don't know if it's going to be good on a Tuesday at 10 a.m. I don't know if anybody's going to uh, going to come hang out. I guess we'll see. I don't see any uh, any comments. We've been live for a whopping 43 seconds here. So I'm going to take a cup of drink a drink a cup of coffee. Oh, there's so many. Hey, Sam. Sam online. Let me check here. I scheduled this um, the wrong time. So I don't know if anybody's going to see that I'm on. Yeah, it says public. All right. We'll come back. Here we got four people, a whopping four people. We are out here, BC. Sam, here we go. Greetings from Italy. Holy cow. I don't even know how to, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce your name. Maybe the bees, silent. Yarn? Yarn? Sol, sol. What's up today? I, I, um, I stayed up way too late, so I slept in. I was going to shoot a video but i have something i have to be at at noon so i figured hey what the heck let's just go let's go live let's just see where this takes us as a group together salt lake city it's quality not quantity we're the best four and we actually have some folks rolling in there 64 greetings from kenwood Greetings to you, Marcus. Good morning from Possum Kingdom Lake. I know exactly where that's at. Just down the road. It's a little chilly. Chihuahua, Mexico. Very cool. Just grabbing some coffee. I got my Roswell, New Mexico mug. One of my all-time favorite mugs. Uh, Glasgow, Scotland, Missouri. Very nice. Ooh, Fort Myers. That's a little bit warmer in Fort Myers this morning than uh, here. A little windy. Found your videos recently and I wanted to say thank you. Just bought a new desk set up after watching several of them and can't wait for the pieces to arrive. Very nice. What did you, uh, what did you get? And thank you for the compliment. Michael says, it is chilly. South Bend, Indiana. Cologne, Germany. It's the best surprise of the day. Hopefully, your day gets better. Then. <laughs> I mean, I I appreciate being a um, a good part of your day. Ohio, it's forty degrees. Bo, Poland, Toronto, right next to Ontario. San Antonio. I'm going to be there on Thursday, briefly. So I fly into San Antonio on Thursday and then drive down to Corpus Christi, which, by the way, um, we're doing a thing with Schkit on Thursday. So kind of a meetup, virtual meetup. So 4 p.m., mark your calendars. Um, going to be hanging out with Jason from Schkit. I think they're going to do a product announcement. As uh, answering questions, actually, I should do that. So, I'm gonna fill out a form or create a form and post it in the description here. Basically, questions for Jason, um, which get any questions you may have about them. Whoa, it's 2 15 a.m. in Sydney. Should I upgrade the thermal paste under the heat sink in my IEMA A07? 
Yeah, I don't know how much heat that that thing rolls off anyway. But I mean, if you're gonna dig into it, you might as well, right? Um, Rogue Slingshot, nine ninety nine, Denon DRA eight hundred H or NR twelve hundred, replacing my dying AVR. So I had the NR seventeen eleven, and I like the slimline. I'm not sure if the DRA but whoops puts out more power. I will say this though, if I'm buying a receiver personally for my personal use, it's either going to be in for music, it's either going to be an Emotiva or a Marantz. Really like the way Marantz sounds for music. So yeah. Uh I thought you were sort of Dallas, why not drive? Cuz it's quicker to drive to um, Kansas than it is to Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi is quite a ways, and I kind of have a rule now: if it takes me, if it takes me longer than six hours to drive, then I'm going to fly because it is it's quite the drive. Six and a half, seven hours, probably even seven hours or eight hours with traffic around Austin. So that's quite a quite a ways for me. Uh, opinion on Klepsch RF73. I don't know that one. I haven't heard it. Ooh, Public Enemy. I like that. I haven't seen that for a while. Uh, Kuala Lampur, 11 p.m. Uh, maybe they'll loan you a VIDAR 2 for review. You know, they have been absolutely awesome. Pretty much anything that I asked for. They're like, yep, here you go. Here you go. So I should. I, I'm i actually using the VIDAR 1 upstairs. I got so frustrated. Oh, my goodness. You guys will have to give me some um, advice here. So last night, I am rearranging. I have, I have a living room down here, and I have a console, and everything's okay. Uh, hooking and changing things out down here because I can get behind it. So upstairs, I have what most people will consider to be, you know, kind of a traditional entertainment setup. The problem is um, modern entertainment setups aren't very deep. And it's hard to get back there. Anyway, I got really frustrated. Literally took everything out of it, took the TV off, pulled out every component, unplugged everything because I was trying to put some uh, put a new processor in there and I have all these wires and it's my fault because I haven't, I haven't labeled anything. So I don't know which speaker wires coming in, but anyway, I got really frustrated. So what do y'all do to hold your components? Is it a rack? Is it a console? Is it a combination thereof? Therein, therein lies the problem. What is it? What do you, what do you all use for, for your equipment. So, yeah. Uh, Lox G830 or IEMA DO3 for Klipsch RP 4000F. IEMA. And Lox G is, um, can be pretty thin. The, the more I listen to some of these affordable class D amps, the less I like the Lox G830. Uses an Infineon M. I think it's 12070 or something like that. So, yeah. Uh, Pangea racks. I actually have two Pangeas right here, but they're not quite big enough for some of the other stuff. So I want something a little bit bigger, a little bit wider. So what I'm thinking is a combination console and then two racks on either side. A Bukar S400 or Klepsch RP600M with the IEMA AO7. Those two speakers could not be more different. And they're a stark difference in how much they cost. So, hmm, it really depends. The good news is the AO7 is neutral to warm. So, it's probably going to play well with either one. The Clips RP600M, I like them, but they still have a really big spike around 1800 hertz for me so i like to eq that down 
S four hundred are warm ish. So it um, depends on what you're looking for. Um, it's interesting. I've never had anybody ask me about whether they should go with the Bucard or the Klipsch because they're so different. I mean, if it were me, mm, mm, I'd probably go with the Bucard because long term, I think I could listen to that longer. Nothing wrong with the Klipsch. It's just a really different sound and it can be a little bit of an intense sound. Do you hate Martin Logan's? I don't have an opinion. I've never heard of Martin Logan. Um, I've never talked to him. I don't think they know I exist. I don't know. I think they're part of Sound United. So, but I've never listened to him. Maybe. Did someone contact me about Martin Logan? I can't remember. <clears throat> Corpus Christi to anywhere is a long drive. Truth. All right, we got another vote for console. I use a low profile AV console, but I just hurt my back changing amps. So maybe don't listen to me. Well, it depends on the amp, right? Because I have a Macintosh up there. And if it wasn't for my ring, so I pulled it out and it dropped down. And my ring kind of held it up. So if it wasn't for my ring, I'd have got a squished hand last night. Um, Impact. I just bought the Denon AVR. AH1 and paired it with a Klipsch RF73. I feel that the AVR has too much power for those speakers. That's an interesting one. <clears throat> well, the Klipsch are generally fairly efficient, but most of the time people are looking for a little bit of extra headroom. You know, I think there's a fallacy that says, like, you can have too much. Now, I have the klh model five the i had a macintosh amp hooked up to them and it was too much they bottomed out very quickly i think there can be something said about that but i also don't think i had it set on the right taps for the um for the mac amp because the mac amp has different taps for different impedances do you actively reach out to companies to ask them for review units how do you decide who to reach out to i do not um i had in the past i reached out to emotiva and i'm trying to think who else i reached out to i think that's it just emotiva I reached out to sound united so the first time i did a polk speaker I actually got to know them. Oh, so here's what has happened. Ron from New Record Day and also Andrew Robinson have introduced me to some folks. But then, you know, I usually end up working or they, they're they nice enough to work with me. But most of the time people reach out to me. Do you know company Taga Harmony? I do not. Uh, if you can use a rack, that is what I would recommend. Yeah, that's my preference. And I have these on casters, which makes it super, super easy. I love it. With management, cable management, yep, easy access. Yeah, I, um, I use a lot of these too. Um, Velcro, Velcro, Velcro. Um. Do you have any 50s to 60s wood furniture hi-fi? I do not. Hey, Scott. Or uh, Franci Francisco Sarez. Could you recommend... Thank $5. Thank you so much. Uh, could you recommend speakers from a computer desktop setup? Currently have some Bose Companion. Um, like to step up. They aren't great. Um, so I'll give you some recommendations for different budgets. So the first one... If you're looking for something natural, I would still get a sub over with this. They are the RSL. I think they're $105 a piece. For, so for $200, that would be your speaker setup. And then you could get uh, IEMA A07, A08 Pro. You get the Fozzy Audio TV 10D. Um, you get the DO3 or something like that that has a DAC in it. Um Oh, I, I always forget the Duke audio. Oh, one moment. Uh, 
This one, the Duke Audio STO STO One Pro, this is a little gem. Um, and then I would try to find a thirty volt power supply to uh, juice this up as high as you can. So this is a, a DAC, tone controls, remote control, um, pretty much everything you need. Uh, very similar to the T9 from IEMA, at 150 bucks, I think. There's two versions of this, though. You want the pro version. I, I don't think it really matters, but I think the pro version sounds a little bit... I think they sound the same, but, I mean, there's this one's cooler. Uh, 140 bucks, um, 200 bucks for speakers. So that's uh, 340 bucks. Need some cables in there. That's one option. Um, I would probably keep the same amp unless you wanted to do some headphone stuff too. Well, even if you want to do headphone stuff, you could still use this one. And then I would also look at, if you're on an extreme budget, the Yamo S801s are good. You could use the 803s as well. I'm actually using the Wharf Dell Evo 4.1s right here for near field. They're a little bit expensive. Um, it depends on your budget. But you could also use the Sony SSCS5s. But they're, some, they're not as affordable as they usually are. And I think, I think the RSL are probably a bit of a better speaker. Anyway. All right. Perfect. Hey, hey, cheap audio man. Great crappy day on Lake of the Ozarks. I like the Lake of the Ozarks. Been up there many times. Not many. I've been up there a few times. I used to ride my motorcycle around there. One day I just was I, I was changing jobs. I'm like, I'm taking three days. I'm gonna ride my bike. So I rode rail from Dallas here all the way up through Arkansas. Beautiful ride. I like Arkansas. Yo, streaming already. Yeah, I woke up late. I was going to do a video or at least shoot part of it. Maybe I'll do that because I have to do, I have to be somewhere at noon. Noon. <laughs> going through puberty. I have to be somewhere um, at noon. I'll probably come back and shoot part of another video. And then I want to release something. Well, I wanted to release something today, but it's not going to happen. So that's why I'm live streaming. And then Thursday's out because I'll be um, going down to Corpus. We will be doing a live stream on Thursday on my channel. And I think Skit's channel, maybe their Facebook too. So we'll see. We'll see. Ever use any of the JDS Labs DAX or amps? No, and I think I briefly <laughs> my voice is cracking today. I think I briefly talked to them. Um, I don't know why we never hooked up. I th I mean, I think Zio says you know great things to say about them, so I don't think um I think they're great. Great. What up, Brian? Should we give some uh, super chats to charity? Why don't we? Why don't you tell me what charity y'all y'all want to um, y'all want to give stuff away to? Randy, how's your health in general, bro? So y'all think about what charity we should give to. Okay, so overall health is way better than I thought it was. So I finally I went to the cardiologist last week and had a colonoscopy last week. A week today, I was had a colonoscopy. That's fine. There's some polyps that they removed or something like that, but the there was nothing that they freaked out about. And I went to the cardiologist. I did an EKG like two weeks ago, but last week I did a stress test and then a calcium score. The calcium score came back with some plaque, so they put me on Lipitor. Which I think is a cholesterol medicine. Yeah. And then I have to take baby aspirin every day and then increase my, or change my diet. So, I mean, I guess it's good that, you know, I found out when I'm 47 versus, you know, 67. So, anyway, 172,000 subs. 
I joined you when you had just under a, a thousand. Tremendous growth. Congrats. Oh, Kevin, thank you so much. Gavin, I can't read today. Gavin, thank you so much. That was a cool time, man. Uh, St. Jude's, charity of choice. Mer Mercury one, Mercury. All right, so 50% 50, 50 of, of all the Super Chats coming in. St. Jude's. So I'm going to write that down. St. Jude's. How's that sound? All right. Average Joe starting it off. The average audio, $5. Good morning, my home slice, Randy. You're going to say homeless, Randy. Anyone from uh, Colorado Springs? My uncle lives in Colorado Springs. Uh, St. Jude's. All right. Average, uh, average audio starting it off. What am I missing, Randy? RSL model. Duke amp. 30 volt power. Uh, you're not really missing anything. I mean, a subwoofer. I would get a subwoofer. For sure. And it depends on like your, your budget. If you have an unlimited budget, then get an RSL subwoofer, which I think they are starting. I think they are going to be available for pre-order this week, maybe. And... But if you're on a budget, then you can look at something like the Polk SW10. If you're on a real budget, then I look at a mono price subwoofer. Um, they're not great, but they're not bad. You can also look at the Emotiva uh, SE8. You can also look at SVS. What is it? I can't remember. SVS12 something 12 Pro. They're more expensive, though. Uh, Francisco, where do you get them? Uh, you can get them from Amazon. RSL, you're going to have to order direct from. But, yeah. Uh, Lear Plus is a main system pre versus Saga. It depends on how many inputs you need. I will tell you personally for me that I would totally use the Lear Plus as a preamp because really... I mainly use a DAC. So my DAC is handling all my digital inputs. And then I would use a phono preamp. So I really only need two inputs. Because. Because. <laughs> because my, dig my DAC is handling, you know, four digital inputs. And then I only need one more analog. For my turntable. Jim Swenson, five dollars. Two fifty going to St. Jude. Bruce Evans, nine ninety nine. Fifty percent to keep you from being homeless from being homeless, Charity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh Yamo C nine ten. Amazon. Rhythmic. Greetings from sunny Arizona. I do love my RME. I want to get one of those. Someone was talking about how awesome they were. Uh, were. I'm waking up with you. My apologies. My daughter got me up at 3.30 last night, too. RSL Speed uh, Woofer Review coming soon. I'm excited for that one. Uh, absolutely. It's been in my living room for over a month now. Have I listened to PSA subs? Actually, that one might be happening. That one may be coming out tomorrow. Because the only thing I have to do is shoot it. I've done all the listening. Uh, when you're using pre-outs on most AVRs, do you have to change any settings to turn off the amps you're now outputting? When using pre-outs on most AVRs, do you have to change any settings to turn off the amps you're now outputting? I was kind of with you until you said the amps you're now outputting. I don't know. I mean, I think it depends on the AVR. I used to have a Marantz add pre-outs. I don't think I had to do anything except put a new amp on there, you know, run RCA on there, and then hook the speakers up to that amp. There may be some presets in there, though, because I think what I could do is I could run an entirely different two channel setup 
and then an entirely different surround setup with different speakers based upon the speaker profile that I was using. So there probably is a way to shut that down and then um, use it or don't use it, if that makes sense. All right. D, Jack with $5. Thank you. Order the Hyphaman Edition XS. And I'm thinking X Duo TA 10R DAC amp. But what are your thoughts for the best match in the $300 range? TA 10R. Let me see, let me look that one up. Because I just tried the X Duo TA. I just tried it on the TA 26S. And it did not like it all right let me share my screen here so i would say no it's not going to work unless it unless that thing has like a class a output if it's if it's true tube i could not get the addition excess to work on the ta26s All right. You know, I should have done this a different way. I'm going to pull this into another screen. There we go. Ooh, okay, so you got your DAC in there. Let's see what the specs are. It just, it's it sounded terrible. I could not drive. I couldn't drive the Dan Clarks with it either. Okay, here we go. XLR, 2,000 milliwatts, 32 ohms. Okay, so this thing sound, uh, phone, 2,000 milliwatts at 32. So this thing sounds like it's not really full-on tube power. Maybe it's a adapted earphone impedance, 16 to 600. I don't know. I would have to... Oh, here we go. DSD, 4493. That's all... Oh, class A buffer. Yeah, okay. Well, I think it would be class A output. I think it would actually be a tube buffer considering there's a tube right there. So I think that's wrong. I think it's a class A output. Probably going to be okay with that one. Uh, full on regular tube. Probably not. So anyway, I hope that answers, answers your question. I will. I need to preface that though or um, and just say I have no experience with running that uh the excess on that amp uh do you still use your moran's nr 1711 actually no it is in emotiva's offices i traded them and then i gave them some money for an rmc processor they use it though they actually like it they were they were comparing it to another competing competitive competing receiver and i said it sounds pretty good i agree i think it sounds pretty good hey randy met dan from email tiva this weekend Ooh, in the montreal audio fest spoke about you he was telling how they will open this summer fulfillment in montreal with service great news for canada very cool yeah dan's a good guy i like him uh, my wife says I spend two thousand dollars on speaker cables because you can hear the difference, but you can't hear me calling you from the kitchen. There you go, gadget, gadget, Dad. Clint Bose, ten dollars, five bucks, going to St. Jude's. Could you recommend a pre-power combo? I am currently running Weem Mini, Modi, Cambridge AXA thirty-five, Klipsch RPE six hundred M Mark II. Running if I could get more out of setup with something like the Emotiva A2 power amp. Uh, sure. That's going to be some uh, plenty of juice for those RP600s. You also may want to look at the G-Horns from Schget. Um, they're only, I think, 20 watts bridged, but you need balance to bridge them. But they sound pretty good. I um, A2 is going to be 
monstrous amount of power. If you're getting the A2 though, and you you ever think you're gonna go get into home theater, just get the A3 because then eventually you'd be able to run a center. You don't need to run three speakers on it now, but I don't think it's that much more expensive than the A2, and it gives you the option of having three speakers later. You know, for pre pre, all right, you're running the Wii Mini Modi, so you already have the Modi. Um, so you don't really need a DAC. I mean, you could add the Saga. I would get the Saga, maybe the Locius, and then you could get the A2 if you need some juice. You can get the G Horns if not. What else do I like? I mean, you get the Vidars. I um, I think the Akatika P power amp is really good but it's a kit you can have it put together though if you want to i like that one not a ton of power i think it's 50 watts but i like it and then you can look at if you're on an extreme budget the a07 with an upgraded power supply and then you could upgrade the um op amps it sounds really good really really good Really, really good. Uh, the A3 has less power per channel compared to the A2. And a phantom center is somewhat, I, sometimes, ideal. Yeah, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. I mean, how much power do you want, though? I mean, get the A2. That's cool, too. I'm just saying that, you know, I'd rather get the A3 and have the option for a center. Especially if you're running Klipsch. Um, for home theater, are you supporter of dynamic EQ? And if so, why? Dynamic EQ? I don't know. Are you talking about like digital EQ? Yes, I am. Because it's easy. And the computer inside will do most of the work for you. I still tweak it though. But yeah, for sure. For sure. I like it. I mean, it can fix, you know, your room or whatever. So if I click one of your Amazon affiliate links, uh, add an item to my wish list and then buy it later, do you still get a commission on it? I think so. I think there's a, there's a certain amount of time that goes by that I get, um, I get credit for it. You know, some, Oh, sh shoot. I'm spilling um, coffee everywhere. Maybe I should just drink it out. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah, so there's a certain amount of time. And then I think if it's the specific product, maybe. I can't answer it, like, 100% accurately, though. Some, like, Crutchfield, like, I get, like, a week. That's pretty good. Hot coffee. But thank you. You know, you can also do any of your shopping. So click on one of my links and then do any shopping through Amazon. I get credit for that. What's amazing is, you know, most of when I look at the sales through Amazon, most of them are obviously audio. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that's not related to audio, though. Oh, I just changed all of my bookmarks shortcuts to Randy's links. Oh, that's very nice of you. Thank you. That really helps out the channel. And the interesting thing is, like, it doesn't cost any more. So it's a great way, like, if you don't want to give super chats or you don't want to do that, I mean, it's great, but you still want to support the channel. It's a great way to do it because legit doesn't cost you anything. I mean, if you're, if you um, like to... Uh, support me D dynamic eq equals compressor i i don't know what that is i don't know what a compressor is is that like something with like pro audio or something this is how good i am at this job i don't know what that is uh mind arbor 499 thank you super sticker 250 going to uh st jude's uh do i have a skit affiliate link i do not skit doesn't do affiliates which Incidentally, I'm going to probably 
talk to them about that. But no, the funny thing about Skit is like I don't get anything. They have left some things with me, um, or just never sent me a return thing. Now the Leer, it was kind of a. I did another. I did a a um, a live stream for them, and in lieu of taking a payment, they just gave me the Leer. But no, to answer your question, no. And I don't think they do. I think they operate on pretty slim margins. So they don't, I don't think they do affiliate. Any rail in the future for review? I'd love to. I haven't talked to them though. And I, I don't think um, I have anything on the way. Mm. So Denifrop series two, too much for a node. Okay. Here we go. Is the Denifrop series two too much for an NADC 338? No. Because <laughs> the NAD, I think the 338, does the 338 have a DAC? Anyway, the Denifrops would be a good pairing with the NAD C338. That thing needs a little bit of mellowing out. The C338 does. Recently saw Sony SSCS5 selling with ISO pads. Thoughts? Yeah, it's probably some vendor that is packaging something and trying to get it in the um, to rank in the uh, Amazon rankings. Like when they type something in. It could be it, but Amazon sells Amazon sells the Sony SSCS fives through Amazon. There are also some other vendors that sell them, and we'll package them with speaker cables and things like that. Sometimes. Okay, yes, sir. A dynamic EQ in the pro world is literally a compressor. Um, I don't have any experience messing with that with an AVR. I personally wouldn't, though, because there's a DSP equalizer. I mean, for home theater, though, like I don't, I don't know. I, I can't, I can't say anything about it. I've never messed with it, so I don't know what the benefits would be. Or the RT85 and Manny instead of the RT85. Should it be fine? Yeah, I like the 85 better than the 85N. Well, and I, I've never had the 85. Maybe I have, but it's just the Naga Oka cartridge, which is interesting because the Naga Oka is about a hundred and ten, hundred twenty dollar cart, where the um, 2M Blue is like a two hundred dollar cart. So if you're just talking about the value of the cart, the RT85 is actually a better value. And the 85N. I like them both, though. There's a reason why I built those cartridges. And the Mini is good. The cool thing is with Fluence, though, you can just get another head shell and cartridge, and then you can swap it out. Super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Um, does anybody know what that's from? Super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Sam Sokolinski. Ten dollars, five dollars going to St. Jude's. Your choice for bookshelves for someone who listens to jazz and death metal on the same playlist. Dump the Q150 and Polk XT20s. Go with the B1 Plus from Emotiva. A little bit different. A little bit different. Um, Q150, a little bit warm. I like that speaker though. So I would go with the uh. B1 plus or the B2 plus from Emotiva. Let's see what you think of that. B um, B1 plus. I think they've gone up in price though. I think they're three hundred dollars or so. Oh, Klipsch nines in your future. Sorry, I missed that convo. I I would love to, and I'm going to talk to them at Expona. No one's reached out to me though from them. I need to uh, reach out. Pitch meetings. That's right. That is, and they are hilarious. Um, <laughs> they're hilarious. Um, John Cooper bought the Emotiva B1 Plus IEMA T8 and IEMA A07 because of your videos. I also paired them with a Yamo C910 uh, sub. The system sounds incredible. Thanks for the information and reviews. I always worry when I'm it's being set up that it's going to end with I hate it 
or what are you talking about? Or it's terrible because a lot of these I start reading before, like I know what they say. I'm reading them real time. John Cooper, you are welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the $10. St. Jude's will get $5. Um, I've recently listened to the podcast where you were invited. Cool stuff. Yeah, that was fun. Cheap audio, man. It's tight. Wow, wow, wow. 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 <laughs> that guy's so funny. B1 Plus are gone. What do you mean? They're still making them. No way that they haven't made those. They're not going to keep making them. A speaker is way too popular. They may be out of stock. Emotiva speakers. Unlock 10% off. 379 man temporarily unavailable they're coming back though i mean maybe maybe not i i doubt it though i would think that they would have uh replaced it 379 man that's expensive i gotta talk to dan about that not that he's going to lower the prices because of me they did they were running a uh holiday special though last november for like two I think they were up below 300. Um, I feel like a J2 is more in the price range. I personally would spend to accompany a C338. On the other hand, upgrade itis is highly contagious, and I hear it's going around. Yeah, for sure. The thing is, like, you can never go wrong with getting a really good source. So don't worry about, like, pairing your source with your amplifiers or your speakers. I mean, some people talk about that. Denifrebs, though, is a great source. So is the J2. But it's kind of like getting a really nice turntable and being like, I can't get a nice turntable because my speakers aren't that great. Well, you can still get a nice turntable and then get better speakers and a better amp. Depends on kind of what you want to anchor your system around. But I would always go with the best source you can possibly get because you are going to be able to add to that later. Like if you get the best speakers that you can get, and you have a crappy source, there's only so far that you can take that system. But if you can get the best source, then as you get better amps, better speakers, as it sounds better for you, then it's going to get better and better. So don't limit yourself with the source. Um, if that's as far as you're going to go, maybe. The C338 is pretty revealing, though. I mean, you're, you're going to hear all the details. Sometimes too much. But... Yeah, anyway, I'll get off my high horse. I dropped a Vidar on my knee yesterday, and my knee is killing me. I mean, I didn't, like, drop it from 10 feet. I was pulling it out, and I had it kind of balancing on my shelf, and I did something, and it fell on my knee. Not happy about that. Hey there, I'm Andres from Panama. Have you listened to Schkit Audio's new mini monoblocks? Yes. I have them right here. The G-Horn. The G-Horn. Ouch. Yes, it was. It's Steve Zeinman. Wow, it's cheap audio, man. Steve, I, I stayed up too late. Then my daughter woke me up at 3.30. Then I slept in this morning. So, I'm doing an impromptu live stream. Um... B. Dizak, dollar ninety nine. Thank you, Cambridge A X R Klipsch eight thousand. Would subs be next step? Sure, you get yourself some subs. Although that, I think the eight thousand F punch pretty hard though. But yeah, doesn't Sith Audio sell insurance for that? Yeah, there's a deductible though, which was not met. Uh, which fourteen gauge OFC speaker wire should I buy? Um, any of them. I usually get whatever Amazon has. Amazon Basics has their own, but for whatever reason, their OFC speaker wire is the one that comes wrapped in that white jacket for it's meant to go in wall. And I don't like having to strip that off. But yeah, I think anything that you can find, that's where I get my stuff. 
I think blue jean cable sells bulk cable. I think audio quest sells bulk cable. So I don't think you can go wrong with either of those. Rainy's been a bad boy. No lunch for you, mister. I might have been a bad boy. I go with Amazon. OFC 12 gauge. Usually I'm, I use 12 gauge too. Actually, I was just talking to a buddy of mine about building some more speaker cables yesterday because I was upstairs and messing with the home theater and I realized that some of my cables, what I really need to do is rerun all my cables and then label them because I, I lost my temper yesterday. Hey, from Rhode Island. Frank and studio. I had a heck of a weekend in Rhode Island. Uh, well, I had a heck of a weekend in Providence. I was stationed in Newport, Rhode Island for about seven weeks. One summer we tore up Providence. Have you come up with any issues with the Emotiva processor? I get a thumping from the sub when I move to 7.1.4 and playing Atmos content seems to be a firmware issue. I did check my firmware. I'm running the, the latest and greatest firmware on it. I did. The only thing I ever noticed was, and I've noticed this on other DAX, so I'm not just saying this is an Emotiva issue. I noticed some like distortion um, from one of the shows, and then I just paused it and then unpaused it and it went away. First time catching a live stream, but I have to ro uh, roll in a meeting in a couple of minutes. Very cool. Well, thanks for joining us. Was um, thank you for joining us. I don't know what else to say. I appreciate you joining us. Me, Frank in studio says nice. LOL. Whew. Yeah. Purple Einstein Denon. Thanks, Olaf and Randy. Which phono amplifier less than six hundred dollars would you recommend? Ooh, so. I have a couple. I think the iFi Zen Phono is great. I think that's around, it used to be like 150 I think it's around $200. I really like the Project 2 bucks Phono, and that's around 500 bucks. Really like that one. I have that one laying around here somewhere. So, yeah. And then if you're on a budget, the Manny is great from Schkit. And then I also like the... Um, the tube one from Fozzy, which is like 60 bucks. And I've been testing an Andover one, which is also pretty good. But you look like you're in the project area. So that tube phono from project is pretty legit. Uh, good morning, Randy and all. Would you buy the Yamo S803s with the center to replace the soundbar? Absolutely. Chris B. Yes, absolutely. Without a doubt. I'd get a sub too, but yeah, without a doubt. Five dollars, thank you. Um, Nate, five dollars, thank you. Ordered J2 AKM and topping E50. One will be with JBL A170 with Weem and Dayton Amp. Other on SSCS5, SMSL SA300. Want to upgrade the Dayton? Yeah, I had a Dayton. I, re I remember it was like supposed to be 30 watts and it. I think there was one want, but yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Ed saying uh, thumbs up all. Yeah, thumb, thumbs it up. $10, love your channel. Thanks for a bunch. Uh, thank you, thanks a bunch for all your content. Thank you. Frank Studio, $10, going to St. Chutes. Um, any speaker recommendations for 12 lots amp? You know, most people are going to say, yeah, sensitivity. I actually have a buddy that runs fairly inefficient speakers on a two-watt tube amp, and he says it gets plenty of love. I mean, you look at Klipsch, 86, anything above 86 dB. I mean, you're not going to get it crazy loud, though. Um, but if it's a legit 12 amps or 12 watts, excuse me, that's more power than people think it is. 12 watts is plenty for most people. Mm, I don't know what the 
I don't know what the sensitivity is on the Yamos. I think it's pretty low on the Emotivas B1 pluses. Um, you could look at Wharfdale. I think Wharfdale has reasonable sensitivities. Is the Evo 4.1s are pretty nice. Hmm. Looking for a VHR for around $300. What would you think of the Yamaha RX V385? VHR. For some reason, I have VCR. I'm thinking you're asking AVR. Right? Maybe? I don't know. I want to click on this and then copy it, but I can't for some reason. Let me check that. Um, all right. V385 Yamaha. I didn't like that. Yamaha V385. Yeah, it's a home theater. All right, let's put it up. I, I honestly thought maybe you're talking about a VCR. <laughs> you know, like, eh, go for it, man. Um, I don't have any experience with it. I think, I mean, I think if you keep your expectations in line, this is probably not going to be spectacular for music. But if you want a affordable home theater receiver, I don't think you can go wrong. I mean, Yamaha has been around for a long time. Um, so yeah, what am I wearing today? As in what cologne, sex panther 1000, Sasquatch 1000, actually, denim shirt, static X <sighs> concert t shirt, pants. I'm wearing jeans. No shoes yet, though. Shoes are going to go on here in a bit. <laughs> have I played with a mini DSP at all? I have not. Uh, thoughts for 2.1. I think if you um, are into it, I, I mean, if, if I had more time, I would totally have a mini DSP. I would totally, totally, totally have a mini DSP. But I switch things out so often that I don't really have a permanent setup. So, yeah. Smallest power for R700 Pokes. Looking at uh, Emotiva Basic 5-channel versus XPA 5-channel home theater and 2-channel. I think you'll be fine, but, I mean, if you can afford the XPA, get the XPA. I'm actually sending my XPA back in to get 8. No, I think it's 9 more channels added to it. Because I'm going to do one mono module for the center channel. And then I think four stereo modules for the rest. So yes, yes, yes. Oh, what watch am I wearing today? It's a Tudor Black Bay. And a uh, Static X. Killing you with it. Some one of my buddies is texting me. He said, "I'm he's you're killing me with a cologne." Sasquatch. Sasquatch one thousand. Um, all right. I'm gonna have to end this here pretty soon. Uh, Gabe R. Hey, buddy. What is a good amp for Polk ES twenty under five hundred dollars? Want to hook up uh, my sub with them? Thanks. ES twenty. Okay. I know the ES fifteen. Under five hundred dollars. It's a TA um, TA one or TA two from Emotiva. It's a heck of an integrated, and it has base management. That's what I'd go with. I don't know uh, TA one. I think I think that's five hundred dollars thereabouts. That's what I'd go with. Um, I would say Rotel, but I don't think they have one that that's that is that affordable you can also look at the denon pma 600 ne i think that's right around that price range 
Those are both both good options. I would say the Audio Lab, but number one, I haven't heard the Audio Lab. Number two, I think it's more than five hundred dollars. So yeah, yeah. Billy Jack style, no shoes. Um, yeah, I'm putting shoes on here later. It's just that I woke up late and just ran in here. I got an open box Yamaha AS801 for. Five ninety nine with my Q Acoustics thirty twenty and Pioneer S seven ten. It's my happy picture. Very very happy. Nice. I actually put the um, Q Acoustics model. I can't remember. It's not that. It's not the highest tier Q. It's not the lowest tier Q. It's the middle tier Q. They're really good. I forgot how good they were. They're upstairs. Randy at the office being productive, but glad to take a break and watch some glorious hi fi talk. Thanks, Nick. We're about ready to wrap it up because I gotta go. I gotta go see a man about a horse. I discovered you on looking for a DAP, reasonably priced, less than five hundred dollars. I don't know anything about DAPs. None. I use phone. Don't know anything. Cambridge AX one hundred is five ninety nine. And I, I don't have any experience with it. Although I've been talking to Cambridge, so I could probably get one in. I have a couple of Cambridge things in. Uh, if you're building an IEMA Duke stack from scratch, what would you include? Um, I would steer you towards anything with a 3255 chipset in it. I don't know which. I mean, this one does not doesn't have the 3255, but it's not necessarily a stack either. Um, did you say I email? Yeah. So I would probably go with this. It was the AO8 Pro. Um, upgrade the power supply. And then for I probably wouldn't go with an IEMA DAC or Duke DAC. I would probably go with something like um just Shelly Labs or uh, the Modi or the topping E50 instead. I think Aima and Duke do amplification really well. I think if other places are a little bit, and their DACs aren't bad, but I think other folks are ahead of them when it comes to DACs. But I think am amplification for cheap amplification, you can't beat them. You can also look at the Fozzy Audio TB10D. Um, Michael Ruiz, four ninety nine. Thank you. RT eighty five N I five Zen Phono Cambridge CX A eighty Emotiva T two plus plus a Ween Pro. All products brands you gave me confidence in. Never been happier. You rock, Randy. Thank you, Michael. You rock. All right, we're gonna go to David, and then I gotta call it a day. Uh, David Helm, five dollars. I recently, thank you. I recently picked up a Fozzy Audio BT thirty D S, and was wondering if you would recommend a set of speakers for desktop desk top under 250 uh we'll go through them really quick sony sscs5s although i've never heard that amp so i don't know what sonic signature it has so these are the ones that i usually recommend sony sscs5s when they're on sale um elac bs41 if you're looking for a warmer sound uh yamo s803 or s801 if you're on a budget emotiva b1 plus if you're looking for extreme clarity and you have some budget. Wharfdale Evo 4.1. That's a fun speaker. It's expensive though. Wharfdale Denton 80th edition. Pretty awesome. And then uh, I'll throw the Q Acoustics. Not a, uh, Yeah, Q Acoustics 3020i in there. And then the Kef Q150. Those were, those are all my like desktop recommendations. Some are cheaper than others. All right, I got to run. I appreciate you being here last minute. Um, sorry, I wasn't better prepared. I really wanted to release a video today, but uh, last night got away from me, and then this morning definitely got away from me. So I appreciate y'all. Have a great week. Thursday, we're going to be live streaming from Corpus Christi with Skit. Hopefully, I get a video out tomorrow, but it's going to be a great week. There's going to be some cool stuff that Skit is doing. So join us. Join us on thursday i think around four all right have a great uh, tuesday great tuesday bye 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 bye
Bye, bye, bye. Bye.